Hi everyone, I'm Armin Gomez and welcome to the spring 2018 edition of Backdrop Palmdale. As the weather warms up, so does the calendar of events in the city, especially here at the Palmdale Playhouse, which will host a variety of arts and entertainment for all ages in the upcoming season. We'll have more on this episode, but first let's kick things off with the City News Report with John Milner. Thanks Armin. If you haven't been to the Palmdale City Library lately, well, you're missing out. Sure, there are books, lots of books, but did you know they also have workshops, clubs, video game tournaments, and more? Here I am with Robert Shoup, the Palmdale City Library Director, and he's going to tell us about a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. There's never a dull moment at the Palmdale City Library, is that correct? That is absolutely true. We've always got things going on. Just today we had our coffee and coloring event, uh, had about 20 people come. Wow. Uh, that, that, that's intended for adults, and, and people love to come and show their expressive selves and, and socialize and mingle, and so that's just one example. There's a wide variety. We have book clubs going on every month. Um, you can find more information on the website about those. We, uh, of course, this yeah, is this. a program we're very excited about. about. Thousand Books Before Kindergarten. It's a national program that we've tapped into. Mm -hmm. And the idea is just to encourage children bef before they reach kindergarten mm -hmm. to be read to. In some cases, they learn to read themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can be done, Thousand Books Before Kindergarten. We just had our first one, Molly. Oh, wow. Because this is up there. She just hit a thousand books. A thousand books. Yeah, wow. before kindergarten. And we have wow. others. Can't see it right now, but we have others that have started. And so yeah. we encourage families to come in and sign up. There are little prizes and incentives, but of course the big prize is the kids are being exposed to, to reading and, and literacy. Absolutely. Does it cost anything? Nope. Absolutely free. Awesome. Friends of the Palmdale City Library are providing the prizes, and, and they... They pay for the awesome banner. Oh, they're great. They're what a great group. And they if really you want to know more about the Friends of the Palmdale City Library, you can go to our website or the library's website. It's worth joining, uh, getting involved. They raise money for programs here at the library. They've been around forever and they've got some new people and have really kind of taken the ball and run with it. So Absolutely. That's yeah. a great they, they just had uh, one of their book sales again a couple of weeks ago, but they have those every two months here at the library. Mm -hmm. uh, they had uh, you can buy a bag of books for five bucks and, wow. and they, they, they pray with that. And all the funds go to support programs, as mm -hmm. you just mentioned, uh, which includes summer reading program. Uh, summer's around the corner. We want right. people to be thinking about that with their kids, but also teens and adults. We have a summer reading program for adults. That'll kick off on June 2nd. I know that's a ways off, but, well, please, so think, but right? please plan on it because uh, we do that every year and, and it, it's great fun and, and just want to encourage reading. Awesome. A couple of the fun ones that I think are pretty fun is uh, Books to Barks. Oh, that's absolutely. It. Yeah, I love that program. A uh, local group brings in trained therapy dogs who are trained just to sit and be their friendly selves <laughs> and, yeah. and, and allow children to read to the dogs. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's proven, demonstrated that if kids are, don't have a judgmental person mm -hmm. listening to them read, it, it helps them to encourage or encourages them to mm -hmm. read. And, and so it's a great program yeah. that we do once a month right, right here. I've heard so many good things about it. Another popular uh, program is story time. Tell us a little bit about Absolutely. story time. That kicks off again, uh, I think, April 3rd. Uh, Sign-ups are required for some of that, although we do have some drop-in story mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's well attended. We have to the, the best storytellers in Antelope Valley, for sure, if not larger region, yes. in Miss Shea and Miss Maria, mm -hmm. uh, including bilingual on Friday mornings. Mm -hmm. So I encourage people to come out to that. Awesome. That, that's, that's fantastic. And then there's this event that's going to be happening April 28th, pretty big third annual. Yes. Tell us about that. Yeah, we're very excited about that. We're, we're gearing up for the uh, Palmdale City Library Book Festival in conjunction with Palmdale City Art Town Festival. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it'll be over outside of the Legacy Commons building, uh, but we have invited local authors to uh, submit applications to be featured, and and that deadline is coming right up, and so we'll be looking at uh, which authors will, will be featured. But in addition to that, we're going to have face painting, balloon tying for the kids, we're going to have a story stage where Miss Shea and Miss Maria will be featured, but also the local authors will get a chance to talk about their works. And this year we got a new twist. We have a little bit of live entertainment that's going to be singing. Uh, can't reveal all the details on okay. that, but we're working on that. All right. So we're lo really looking forward to that. That's Saturday, April 28th. Mm -hmm. 
from 12 to 3. So, so put that on the calendar, Saturday, April 28th. <laughs> The Palmdale City Library Book Festival and Art Town Fusion at Legacy Commons for Active Seniors. It's absolutely free. For more information on library programs, you can go to the cityofpalmdale.org forward slash library or follow them on Facebook at Palmdale City Library. A doorway from Palmdale's past made way for the future as the remnants of the former course on Pool Center were demolished to make way for a brand new facility. Construction is underway for the new pool and pool house as part of the Corson Arts Colony West. Due to Corson's advanced age, power and water is only available intermittently during the construction and therefore the entire park will be closed until completion next year. The Corson Arts Colony West is the second phase of a two-phase development known Known as the Corson Arts Colony. Phase 1, Corson Arts Colony East, broke ground in March 2017. The project is a livable, interconnected, new construction arts oriented community of 81 apartment units in two buildings, targeting low income families and homeless veterans. The project will consist of two modern three story buildings, plus a standalone arts gallery, an art walk, classrooms, small amphitheater, and construction of a new pool at Corson Park. This started about 20 years ago. We had this vision of our downtown. What's it going to look like? And if you go back 20 years, you'd see a much different downtown. So this transformation is ongoing. We have an important next step across the street, so that's awesome. Residents are encouraged to take advantage of the amenities at nearby parks, including Desert Sands Park, located at 39117 3rd Street East, and McAdam Park, 38115 30th Street East. A healing and heartfelt ceremony was held in honor of slain officer Sergeant Steve Owen as Barrel Springs Equestrian Park was dedicated in his name. Tahone Park Equestrian Arena was renamed Sergeant Steve Owen Arena in a ceremony attended by law enforcement, government officials, and community members. They paid tribute to an officer who gave his life protecting the Antelope Valley, and according to those who knew him best, it was a fitting honor for a man who also enjoyed patrolling on horseback. Steve was an active member of the Sheriff's Mounted Enforcement Detail, and the dedication of the Steve Owen Arena is deserving of a hero, and I know that Steve is proud. And it is a truly an amazing tribute to him to have this arena dedicated in his memory. He was a, a great horseman. He loved enforcing the law on horseback, and uh, I really truly believe that if he were here today, not only would he be grateful, but also embarrassed that, this, that there was so much fuss being made about him. Barrel Springs Equestrian Trail and Sergeant Steve Owen Arena is located at 1300 Barrel Springs Road. For more information, you may contact the city's Recreation and Culture Department at 661-267-5611. Palmdale's Ruth and Kiri are on a roll again, and this time they're tackling homelessness in our community, but they need your help. Hi Palmdale, it's Ruth and Kiri, and we just like to say thank you to all of our residents who participated in the online survey regarding homelessness in Palmdale. The teams have completed their surveys out in the field amongst our actual homeless population, and now we are moving on to the next phase where we take all that information we have gathered and begin to work with our community partners to move forward in finding solutions for the future. So, were you aware that Ruth and Carrie, Ruth and Carrie, have our own Facebook page? Visit our Facebook page, follow us for everything that's going on in Palmdale, and it's not just about crime prevention, it's about safety, it's about some of the upcoming events that we have. That's right, as a matter of fact, we have a dog walker watch uh, at Yellen Park on May 19th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. You're not gonna wanna miss this, especially if you have a, a pooch in the family. Come on out for some uh, games, prizes, a photo backdrop opportunity, and information about how to report crime and suspicious activity while you're out walking your pet. So again, don't forget to follow Ruth and Carrie, Crime Prevention with Ruth and Carrie, um, on Facebook. And again, more information that you'll ever know what to do with. South Antelope Valley Emergency Services, or SAVES, is constantly looking for ways to improve quality of life for our residents. Recently, they implemented a new system that brings more humanity and choice to those they serve. Founded in 1983, SAVES is a City of Palmdale program managed by the Neighborhood Services Department. 
SAVES is dedicated to alleviating hunger among very low and extremely low income working families, elderly, disabled, and homeless in the South Antelope Valley. The day-to-day -day operations of SAVES and staffing are funded through Community Development Block Grants, also known as CDBG. Food is provided through a collaboration with the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank, federal programs, and the daily contributions of local markets, stores, and restaurants. So the transition to Client's Choice for Saves was not a very swift one. We actually did a little bit of work, about two years worth of background work. Uh, we wanted to ensure that when we did transition to Client's Choice, it was in the appropriate way for our clients. We wanted to make sure that there was a lot of respect and a lot of dignity in the way that we were providing the services. To that end, we worked with a little group of our clients that we invited into participating in our trial basis. This system allows us to be able to put everything that we're getting in a donation directly to our clients. And we're always surprised that even the most different item finds a happy customer. It empowers you. You don't feel like you're just under somebody telling you this is how it needs to be done. It gives freedom. It makes you feel like a person. You're expressing um, yourself through, I suppose, what you pick up and what you don't. Um, and I also like the fact that I'm able to regulate the amount of things that I may need in the house versus the things I don't. If I need apples, there's apples. If there's, if I have apples, I don't need apples. So for me, it's great. I think the client's choice is very beneficial. I think it's fast, it's functional, and it alleviates what you don't like, other people may like. So you can get what you want, and it works fa fast and keeps it simple. SAVES donates extra food to local senior centers, sober living homes, and other food assistant programs. If you're interested in either assisting them through donations or volunteering, please visit their website or call 661-267-5191. Thanks, John. Well, there are exciting developments in local education with partnerships and collaborations to help students reach their ultimate potential. One such school is the Palmdale Prep Academy, established by the Antelope Valley Union High School District. Palmdale Preparatory Academy may be one of the newest charter schools on the block, but they're quickly making a name for themselves. As part of the Antelope Valley Union High School District's focus on developing specific career and community-based learning through their academies of the Antelope Valley, Palmdale Prep is the ideal environment. Hey, now we're coding and we have this paysetter project, um, you know, underway and we're able to have school-wide team building so we can build that family culture. So um, like every other Friday we get to do a team building activity during PE where the staff and the students and we all get to come together and do some challenging fun activity. Um, so it's been fun to watch it grow from strangers to becoming a family where we get to not only enjoy time with each other in the class but we also get to instill in the kids these life skills that they may not have had otherwise. We learned about coding this year is like I'm saying it's incredible like when I first started I didn't know how to do anything now like I'm like ahead of my class with coding it's so it's fun this school it's very family type of school because everyone gets along and this school is like different from everything else every other school because everyone gets along no fights are here I do still have them do things, you know, hands-on, create things with their own hands, not just technology, because I feel like they need to be able to do both. So um, we do the pencil to paper, uh, we do the Chromebook, and uh, they just, they have this great blend of, um, like, I guess, old school techniques and also the technology as well. So they should be able to adapt to any environment, and if technology ever fails, which we know it does, um, they will be ready to just pick up and, and go. Students can enter this free public charter school at the middle school level and develop valuable skills that will prepare them for Palmdale High School's full-fledged Health Careers Academy and eventually on the path towards successful employment in the healthcare industry. The curriculum also prepares students with real-world applications and collaborations with the local community. What 
we have been doing is we take six, we're taking six kids currently to the retirement facility so that we can bridge that genera generational gap. When we go there, the idea is that they are going to um, improve the quality of life of a resident. So finding something to aid them in whatever area of life or whatever capacity they need is the kid's job. And, and we offer a makerspace here where they can build and invent something to help the kid, to help the residents improve their quality of life. Oh, really great school to, uh, 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 to be in because well, I'm in the previous school, um, I didn't learn a any of that uh, until I came to this school. Which is um, a very, very big advantage to me because um, I get to learn more, I get to experience more. Yes, we are health careers. We will have all of the spaces available, like maker spaces, innovation spaces moving forward. But part of what we're also doing is um, we're coding every Wednesday. We want our kids to start to understand that language, that type of um, style, because we know in the future that's going to become an important skill. The other thing that we're looking at is an 80-20 model. That 80-20 model really is all about 20% time of kids focusing on who they are, what they're passionate about, and then taking that subject and honing in on their passion within that subject or on a bigger surface level, with maybe it's health careers, maybe it's coding, maybe it's something else, but they're gonna use that 20% to really focus in on that and develop that skill a little bit better. Currently, there is open enrollment for junior high students in seventh and eighth grades. Upcoming informational sessions will be held on April 5th and April 12th. You can also visit their website at palmdellprep.com or call 661-274-4619. When we return, we'll have the latest in environmental and entertainment news right after this quick break. Anthony is wanted everywhere. Anthony's on my team. Oh, he's on my team. But recently, Anthony went with his parents to find a new place to live. It's already rented. But housing discrimination is illegal, complaint. so Anthony's parents yeah, filed a complaint. And now, they have a wonderful place to live. If you believe you've been discriminated against because of your race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familial status, or disability, contact your local Fair Housing Center. We were in an emergency situation. We don't have extra. We have a little bit of water and a little bit of food. I don't think we have a first aid kit. We have tuna fish. We have right. beans. We have um, um, beans. canned tomatoes. True. You know, that's true. But that's uh, really not survival food. Tomato we, paste. Yeah. Well. Right. Yeah. I, Welcome back to Backdrop Palmdale. Spring season means spring cleaning is in the air, which also reminds us of ways to eliminate waste in our lives. Antelope Valley Pride Month is this April and is a good way to jumpstart these lifestyle changes. Here's Micah Schuler with all the upcoming local events. Hi, I'm Micah Schuler with the Public Works Department, and today we're going to be talking about some exciting topics and news happening here in Palmdale, specifically in relation to April's Environmental Pride Month. I spoke with Ben Lucha in the Environmental and Technology Division to learn what free services are available to assist with keeping the Antelope Valley clean. LA County has a new SHARPS program and you can help ensure proper containment and disposal of household SHARPS by visiting cardyoursharps.com. Ben, so tell me a little bit about April's Environmental Pride Month and the insert that will be coming out in the Antelope Valley Press. Well, yes, uh, every year in April we celebrate Antelope Valley Environmental Pride Month. It coincides with Earth Day also being in April and it was started by the Antelope Valley Illegal Dumping Task Force to help discourage people from dumping in the desert. But it it's pretty much evolved since then and now it Im includes a lot more than just legal dumping issues. So, for example, in this insert, we'll outline a lot of information in regards to, for example, for City of Palmdale residents, there's Palmdale Pride Week, 
which is the last week of April, where people can put out extra bags of trash and have it collected free of charge so they can start doing their spring cleaning, et cetera. Uh, beyond that, we have information about a free tire collection event that's being conducted by the county. We have uh, two smart gardening workshops that will be in Lancaster and in Acton at diff on different days. If anyone would like to learn about composting and smart gardening techniques to help save water. And also information about what to do with your household hazardous waste, um, what to do with uh, your bulky items, um, what else is there. There's information about where you can take your used oil or paint to get recycled. Did you know that all Palmdale Waste Management customers receive two annual landfill visits? Up to four bulky items can be picked up curbside four times a year, and additionally two annual overage pickups of material trash that does not fit in the provided trash cart at no additional charge. One pickup is considered three large bags, boxes, or barrels of trash. These can be left at the curb next to the trash cart on regular scheduled service days. In addition to the two free pickups, overage pickups are provided for free the week in April during the city's Environmental Pride Week. In addition to the special events happening in April, the City of Palmdale has been hosting household hazardous waste collection events all year long. These events allow residents to properly dispose of their hazardous waste, which include TVs, computers, printers, small kitchen appliances, fluorescent bulbs, household batteries, aerosols, cell phones, and any mercury-containing items. The next two hazardous waste collection events are scheduled for Sunday, April 29th at Dominic Masari Park and June 23rd at the Palmdale Maintenance Yard from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you're not sure about what is a hazardous waste or how to properly recycle or dispose of almost any item, please be sure to download the My Waste app. The app will also allow you to report issues such as traffic signal malfunctions, park issues, illegal dumping, and graffiti to the city and notify you of your trash and street sweeping days. The city would also like to remind you of our permanent collection center if you have any electronics or other household hazardous waste that you are looking to safely recycle or dispose of any time of year. You may take it to the Antelope Valley Environmental Collection Center the first and third Saturday of every month from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. to have it collected for free of charge. It's exciting to see everyone doing their part to keep our community looking beautiful and the environment clean. While on the topic of a clean environment, I recently attended the LA Auto Show and Cal ETC Power Lunch to learn about the current electric vehicle market status, benefits of driving electric, and what the community could do to support EV adoption. I spoke with the director of Chevrolet's Western Regional Communications, as well as Commissioner Scott with the California Energy Commission. Well, part of our effort to get more EVs on the road is to help explain to people directly how an EV can benefit their life and how there's no compromise and help them understand that you really don't have to give up any of the comforts that you enjoy in a conventional car by going with an EV. And oftentimes that's very hard to explain in traditional marketing or advertisements that are really short. So events like this where we get to meet people face to face and go with them on the show floor, kick the tires, open the doors, that works much better. So that's what we're up to today. Great. Right. And what have uh, some of the needs the community has brought to you that they'd like to see in the electric vehicles and what is Chevrolet doing to meet those needs? Well, one of the first things is cost. Everybody wants to see the price of these cars come down, which makes sense. And with electric cars, the advancement of technology, so the battery, the electric motors and things like that, they come down exponentially every time we do a new car. It's just as you get better building them, they become cheaper. And we're passing those costs on to the customer. So our first Volt that we launched in 2010 was $10,000 more expensive than the current one. So it's, it's very easy to track the decline in the cost of these vehicles. So the California Energy Commission is the state's primary energy planning and permitting agency. And what we do is um, we have a program that puts up to $100 million in transforming transportation every year. And we're putting about 17 or 18 million of those dollars into building out the charging infrastructure to support the battery electric vehicles. So if people uh, want, like say, grants or money to, to get involved in this, that's something that they can go to you and, and be funded? Or how does that work? Absolutely. So I'm the lead commissioner for transportation at the Energy Commission. We've got a transportation program. And uh, you can find us on our website. It's energycommission.ca.gov, and there's a funding tab at the top. So if you click on that, that's how you can find out all of the different opportunities that we have. 
um, and we have several in the infrastructure, charging infrastructure space, whether it's getting a voucher, if you want to apply to a loan loss reserve program, we have several different options for how you could, could get chargers in your neighborhood. There are some great options available if you are interested in purchasing or leasing a new electric vehicle. In addition, Antelope Valley Air Quality Management District offers a $1,000 alternative fuel vehicle incentive to local residents per electric or electric hybrid vehicle on new vehicle purchases or lease agreements made with local Antelope Valley dealerships. To apply, visit www.avaqmd.ca.gov and click on the grants link. Or if you have any questions about the program, please contact Julie McKeon, Air Quality Specialist and Grants Program Coordinator at 661-723-8070, extension 8. As you can see, there are lots of resources available and many options to help residents go green. Speaking of electricity, I recently spoke with Arista in our Environmental and Technology Division regarding the city's street light acquisition project. So the city has actually just purchased all of its street lights and we will be taking over maintenance of the lights, which means if you have a light that's out on your street, we're asking residents to call the city or visit the city's, street, uh, the city's web page or email streetlights at cityofpalmdale.org in order to tell us about an outage. And when will these uh, new street lights be out for residents to see? Uh, we will be retrofitting the lights uh, starting over the summer to LED light emitting diode lights and that project will last until December. So you may see uh, contractors out on the streets changing over the lights. The city will continue to keep the public up to date with its progress of retrofitting city lights to highly efficient LED lights. You can email streetlights at cityofpalmdale.org or call 661 267-5300 with any questions or concerns. Wow, I can't wait to see those street lights in my neighborhood. Energy efficient street lights aren't the only update on streets we have for you. I recently spoke with Jennifer in our maintenance division regarding our street sweeping contract with waste management. Jennifer, can you tell me about the street sweeping services offered to residents and how they can find out which days their streets are scheduled for service? Sure. Vanco is actually the company that is contracted. They're contracted through waste management and that's with our franchise agreement with the city of Palmdale. And what's great is that there are resources for the residents right on the city of Palmdale's website. They could go on the home page and right on the how to section there are several blue links. One of them includes street sweeping. If they click on that, it's going to send them to a tab that says view my schedule and then they have the opportunity to put their address in and from there it'll show right on the calendar what days of the week their street sweeping schedule is. And what's even great is that they can download the My Waste um, app and that will give them the ability to set reminders so then they don't even have to remember their phone will remind them when the street sweeping schedule is and when a truck's going to come by. Okay, that's great. And then do residents need to be moving their vehicles that are parked on the streets on their street sweeping days? Well, there's not a street or a city of Palmdale ordinance, it's, so it's not required, but we definitely recommend it because if everybody can move their vehicles, the street sweeper can get closer to the gutter and remove more debris. We also encourage residents to speak with their neighbors. Um, it could be a neighborhood collective effort if everybody kind of speaks to each other, lets um, everybody know what street sweeping days, and that way everybody can move their vehicles and the streets can get much cleaner. Hopefully, with our efforts and what we've learned, we can continue to address these important issues. I hope you've enjoyed our Public Works updates. Back to you, Armin. Thanks, Micah. We're here at the Palmdale Playhouse, the heart of community theater in the Antelope Valley. It's one of Palmdale's best kept secrets. Known more for its youth-oriented programs, the Playhouse is also home to an award-winning orchestra, West Coast Classical, as well as a wide range of musicals, dramatic plays, and art exhibitions. Hi everybody, I'm Annie Pagliaro with the City of Palmdale Recreation and Culture. I'm here to uh, let you know what's coming up in the great city of Palmdale. At the Palmdale Playhouse, artist Elizabeth Kennedy will be displaying her artwork um, through April 29th. Liz is a fantastic and vibrant um, painter and um, her artwork will be displayed anytime the Palmdale Playhouse is open. 
Be sure to get your tickets early for Shrek the Musical. This is going to be a fantastic family event. Um, uh, children are welcome at this musical. Um, these are all local actors and actresses and singers and dancers. Um, this is a collaborative production between the City of Palmdale and Palmdale Repertory Theater. The dates of the performance are April 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Be sure to check our website for tickets because some shows are selling out quickly. April 13th, 14th, and 15th, West Coast Classical presents a tribute to Broadway. This is a fantastic show. I've heard the rehearsals. Um, this is a great um, organization and their performances do not disappoint. This is a, a nice outing to bring the family to, um, grandma and grandpa. Um, come out and enjoy a nice afternoon of music. Um, maybe go to dinner at one of our local restaurants and make a day of it. On May 3rd, the Palmdale will host artist Pepe Milan, The Unique Realm. Pepe is an award-winning children's book illustrator and a freelance artist. His reception will be on May 3rd. Um, these receptions are free. Come on out, enjoy the art, um, and help support, support our local artists. On May 26th, West Coast Classicals Jazz Ensemble will perform from the Great American Songbook all the hits that you already know um, with their jazz ensemble. And this is a really fun, upbeat um, concert. And it's an evening out. Um, again, a, a great way to spend the night on the town out in Palmdale. On April 28th at Legacy Commons, we will be presenting the Art Town Fusion and Book Festival event. This is a collaboration between Legacy Commons and the Palmdale Library. Um, the library brings out local authors and um, we host all the local artists inside Legacy Commons with live entertainment on April 28th at Legacy Commons. Don't forget this summer, there'll be a full lineup at the Palmdale Amphitheater for concerts and family movie nights. We also have a big surprise for our residents. Um, big explosion in the sky is coming, so stay tuned and check our website. Also, you know summer has arrived when Dry Town Water Park opens Memorial Weekend. Don't forget to purchase your season passes online. There is an early bird special being offered. With every season pass you purchase, you receive a free one-day admission ticket. Hurry, this sale won't last long. This year, Dry Town Water Park's opening day is Saturday, May 26th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Visit drytownwaterpark.com for more information. To find out more information on all city events and classes, be sure to check out the latest edition of the Palmdale News Activities and Entertainment Guide, or you can always go online on the city's website at www.cityofpalmdale.org. We'll be back right after this quick break. While you're at it, I have a lot of trash that I need to get rid of too. Um, you think you can handle that? Yeah, that'd be easy. Let's see, with the work, your extra trash, other cost. I would say it would cost this much. Really? That's about half of what the other guy told me. When can we start? Be here tomorrow. Just because you didn't dump it, it doesn't mean that you didn't dump it. Ensure that your trash is properly recycled or disposed of. At Waste Management, we believe every day is Earth Day when you recycle right. Join us in making this motto a movement 365 days a year. Here are a few tips for recycling right. Completely empty plastic bottles and remove food items from containers before recycling them. Take loose plastic bags to participating stores in your community and teach others how to recycle right. Have a happy Earth Day every day. It was 1856. The Dry Town Mining Company looked like it was fixing to blow off the map faster than a tumbleweed in a high wind when suddenly, Eureka! The Dry Town Mining Company became known as Dry Town Water Park. People traveled far and wide to enjoy the wettest and wildest recreation park this side of the Mississippi. So get wet at Dry Town. Come experience how the West was fun with rides like Devil's Punch Bowl. Rattler's Revenge, The Wildcatter, and Dry Town's newest attraction, Dusty's Mineshaft Racer. And those aiming to just mosey along for the day, there's also the Big Rock River. And youngins can make a splash in the little miners' camp. Safe, affordable, and close to home. 
So pony on up to Dry Town Water Park where you're guaranteed to get wet. Yeehaw! Welcome back to Backtrop Palmdale. You probably notice a lot of construction going on in the city. And with all this activity, it's hard to keep track of the newest businesses, hotels, restaurants, schools, you name it. So to keep you up to date on the latest in economic development, here's John Milner. Thanks, Armin. You're right. Business is booming in Palmdale and buckle up because there's much more to come. The signs are up for the much anticipated Home Goods and Five Below stores in Palmdale, which are set to open very soon. In the meantime, Element Hotel is already welcoming visitors and will be hosting a grand opening this spring. Turner's Outdoorsman also held their ribbon cutting ceremony. And for all the foodies out there, Pinkfish Pokey and Waffle Kitchen on the east side are ready to tempt your taste buds. This doesn't even include all the activity over at the Antelope Valley Mall. Well, here we are at the Antelope Valley Mall with its marketing director, Trisha Granger. Trisha, good to see you. You too. And uh, you and I are both wearing jackets today because it's a little cold outside. Oh, it, it is chilly. Uh, once in a while, we get those cold winter days here in Antelope Valley, and this is one of them. But this is a great place to come when it's cold and hot. And I, this weekend, I was here doing my walking. Nice because it's a great place. I don't have the wind right. blowing dust in me. So, But I understand you have a little walking group that's here quite a bit. We do. You know, we actually open our doors uh, every day of the year with the exception of Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Um, we open every morning at 6 a.m. We unlock all the mall doors and people can come in and walk. So whether it's hot, cold, windy, rainy, whatever, um, whatever the temperature is outside, you can come in and walk. And there's a, a group of people. There's probably, I don't know, 50 people, wow. probably more wow. um, that walk. And if you walk the entire mall, so you have to go to each anchor, each right. hallway, right. it's about a mile around. So, you know, you can come in and walk the mall five times and that's five miles for the day you, right you get five miles and yeah, yeah for me who have, i have allergies pretty bad out here mm -hmm. nothing in here so right? it's a nice and not in the summer when it's a hundred and yeah. whatever it's a great place right and you know the music's on so there's always yeah. music yeah i mean it's all it's all good and it's every day of the year with the exception of those three holidays that yeah. we open up and people can come in and um you know it's it's free and it's fun and you, you make friends you see everybody has a lot of friends in here and so i think some of them are racing it's like speed walking <laughs> yeah you get the strollers going right, right. and everybody so yeah it's awesome. every day so yeah it's our mall walking club um you know it's brought to you by high desert medical group so they sponsor that and make sure that it's a mile around and all that great stuff. Awesome, that's yeah. good news. So right behind us is one of the newer places yeah. here. Tell us a little about Box Lunch. Here I am thinking, oh, I'm going to get something to eat. That's <laughs> not what this place is about. Right? Box Lunch is a great store. It is not food. So we all thought that in the beginning, right? We all were like, good, a new lunch place. But the great thing is, is even though they don't serve food, they provide food. So any of your purchases help them provide meals um, through Feeding America, which mm. then in turn donates to local Local food banks. I think Saves was on the list. I think their intention is to rotate through um, the local food banks, which is really great because unfortunately people are hungry. Right. There are hungry people. And so, you know, if you're going to treat yourself to some uh, memorabilia, they have Disney and TV shows. Like I'm a big Gil Gilmore Girls fan, so I got a Luke's Diner shirt in there. Right. Um, Star Wars. They have some NASA stuff in there. If you're not, you know, out on base at the NASA gift shop, you can get it here. So some great stuff. And they are giving back and they're giving back here locally, which is really great. That's Awesome. So no food, but actually I think maybe sometimes there's some candy in there, but that's about it. You know, then next to them is Bath and Body Works. Yeah. They also remodeled last year. They expanded and remodeled, and so they have a big selection of White Barn candle um, in there, which is of course is their brand of candle. So it's a great, you know, it's, it's it was a great addition yeah. to this wing. Looks really good. I do some shopping in there for presents for my wife from time to time, so they really like that place, and my daughter likes it as well. So we're in the spring, getting ready for spring. Yeah. So that means we got to visit are coming who's gonna be here right, the bunny's here he's here through march 31st because this year april's on uh april's on easter's on april 1st this okay. year so the money's here daily through uh saturday march 31st you can come down and get your photos digital photos are available and um you can also you know visits are always free and every child who visits gets a free gift 
So yeah, the bunnies here, you can put in all your Easter wishes. You know, we keep going with our kids club is monthly. You know, this year we brought in entertainment. Um, so if you haven't checked out our calendar, you can check it out um, at av-mall.com or on our Facebook page. And you know, we also have magnets. And if you're on the other side of the mall, there's a giant barricade that's like a 50 foot wall that will tell you the dates. But this year we've incorporated some entertainment. So, um, you know, earlier this year we had some dancing, we're having some princess visits. Um, we're gonna have a reptile show later this Very year. Cool. Reptile, yeah, reptile yeah. show. Um, you know, oh my. <laughs> right, but they're probably all right outside the door anyway. So, um, so yeah, you know, it's a great kids club. We're still doing it monthly. We did change the time this year. It's 4.30 to 6.30. And then every other month we have a free craft, which has been great. So yeah, lots still going on. Awesome. Well, there you have this, what's happening right now at the Antelope Valley Mall, where you can get all kinds of things, shopping, clothes, jewelry, shoes, great restaurants, right here at the epicenter of the Antelope Valley, the Antelope Valley Mall. Construction is moving along briskly on the new Corson Arts Colony East project, located at 939 East Avenue Q12. In the heart of Palmdale, CAC East is an affordable apartment community for individuals and families. Artist preference will be given to portfolioed artists. Currently, applications are being accepted. For an application or to learn more, please call 1-800-801-8440, extension 7206. The Anlo Valley College also opened their brand new Palmdale campus and is providing a convenient and state-of-the-art facility for our local students to achieve a higher education. Recently, the Anlo Valley College Palmdale Center held an open house for the community to showcase its new location. Classes have been in session since last fall, and the facility boasts new classrooms and labs, a bookstore, library, student lounge, free parking, and more. For more information on the ABC Palmdale Center, you can visit their webpage at www.avc.edu forward slash Palmdale or call 661-722-6300. For more information on economic development or any business opportunities in Palmdale, please call 661-267-5125. Back to you, Armin. Well, that will wrap it up for us here on the Spring 2018 edition of Backdrop Palmdale. As always, for more information on any of the stories we've featured on today's program, please visit our website at www.cityofpalmdale.org or you can call us at 661-267-5115. I'm Armin Gomez and we'll see you next time on Backdrop Palmdale.